to Coffee and Conversation, the podcast where... Nothing is off table. I'm Jackie. And I'm Sika. And today we want to talk about teachers. More specifically... Bad teachers? Yeah. and A-hole teachers. A-hole teachers, absolutely. Especially coming from someone who is a teacher. I'm a teacher. I went to training to become a teacher, and I'm currently still a teacher. I've had some terrible influences in my life. And despite the fact that I've had terrible experiences, I still wanted to become a teacher. I wanted to be so different for them. So Sika and I's experiences are very different. Yeah. For different reasons. Yep. <laughs> but I really wanted to... Um, dis- Get on this subject. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people have had bad experiences with teachers. And I think it's not a teacher thing. It's a person thing. Yeah, it's bad attitude. Yeah, it's someone who's in there for the wrong reason. I think it's kind of like every profession, right? Yeah, there's some people who are in their profession really for the wrong reasons. A lot of people will go into a profession because it's needed, so people are needed in that profession, or it's good money. So just because it's one of those, so you're either guaranteed a job or you have a good salary, mm-hmm. doesn't mean you're going to be good at your job. Yeah, and especially here, so when we're talking about our experience, we're mostly, well, we're in Canada. Yes, yes. And we're more specifically in Quebec, which is the French side of Canada. And there's a huge demand for teachers. It's actually been proven that 80, between 70 and 80% of teachers here in Quebec quit within the first five years. That doesn't surprise me. It's an exhausting job. People don't realize it. And the budget cuts constantly. So obviously being a teacher is really hard. Again, I'm someone who was a teacher in elementary school, high school, college and university so i've done a little bit of everything and also i have my teaching experience from karate yeah so this is not to put teachers down because i'm a teacher but there are some pretty um yeah people out there who should not be teachers i can agree and i I have multiple examples so i want to let's start with you sika because i think my experiences are a little intense and i also have the experiences from Egypt. That's true. Because when I was living in Egypt, you didn't go to school there. I went to school in Egypt and I have different experiences, but we might have to make an entirely different video. Just for the Egypt teachers? Just for the Egypt teachers. (laughs) We'll see how far we get with today's teachers and then probably discuss teachers I've had in Egypt because someone like me was a bit of a free spirit. You're, 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 you were something. I was something. I did not. <laughs> you were a brat. I was a brat. I was a terrible student. So that's another thing to remember. I was boisterous. I was very active. So let's keep that in mind. So go ahead, Sika. Let's let's start with your earliest memories of a teacher who you remember to be. Earliest memory? Or, or do you want to just go in any order you want? Any order. I think. Okay, go the ahead. One that, I think the one that really drove me nuts was my English teacher. The one in high school? The one in high school. So I actually had her... I actually... I actually had her... Well, now she has a reason to discuss your English. (laughs) So let's give some context first. Yeah. So it's an English teacher that I had for two of my grades. So uh, I think you would call it ninth grade and 11th grade. Mm -hmm. Um, And as soon as she saw my name on her list in ninth grade, she kind of just said my family name. Oh, yeah. And she goes family name and my brother's name so she had an experience from my brother now my brother was a bit of a troublemaker and he had her have a breakdown um well wasn't him only it was the entire class class, but i think he started the beef or he made it worse because she had it out for me eight years later (laughs) some was it that long after? yeah because him and i have seven or eight years of apart yeah. So it took me eight years to get into that grade. And she just said, family name. like, And then she repeated, first name, family name of my brother. And I was like, oh. And we didn't even get the whole story. So we didn't know how beefy it was. But she had it out for me. And, and our family name starts um, on the top of the list. So I was the first student she named and the first student. And I was like what's happening? Most teachers love me. Like, I was a huge teacher's pet. So when she said that, I was like... She had it out for you before it started. I didn't even know her yet. And she had it out for me just because of my family name. And I was like, okay, I'm going to have to be on even better behavior. And which is saying a lot because I was a huge teacher's pet. She was so well behaved, so different from the rest of us. So my, so our, our, our brothers. Yeah. 
are basically also active, boisterous, and opinionated. Yep. And they they made sure they were vocal about it. Yeah. So despite the fact that I think our siblings, are, our brothers are very sweet, but when it comes to teachers, we have an issue with authority. Just in high school in general, they were... I yeah. Don't, I don't know about the the eldest, how he was. And, well, I, I have some stories, but I'm not going to get into that. But the brother in question for um, my teacher's reaction was a troublemaker at school mm-hmm. because he had told me stories of, of throwing garbage cans, like full-on metal garbage cans, over lockers lockers yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think they had thrown one mm-hmm. down the stairwell and it hit a teacher <gasps> oh no I did not face. know that yeah. oh no <laughs> so he made enough of an impact for teachers to know there's two teachers um who saw my family name our family name and literally said family name and then brother's name mm-hmm. and then looked at me like, oh, you're trouble. Oh, no. And it's okay, only but one teacher who really. Yeah, but let's get back to me. the English teacher. Let's get back to the she English teacher. She had it out for me. So, how did she have it out for you? She was just generally very short tempered with me, even though I wasn't a bad student mm-hmm. at all. Like, you know, I was super quiet and I was a huge teacher's pen. I always wanted to be, you know, the best I could be for my teachers. I was a, I was a huge suck up. Yeah. Um, But one of the things that she did that really pissed me off the first time was um, we had like an essay, I guess you could say, Mm -hmm. that we had to write. And in Quebec, um, English is a second language in school. So it's very basic English. Yeah. So English here, just just to make it clear, is super basic. For us, we were getting... It was a super easy class. So except for her classes, I was always getting A's. Every grade, every semester, A's. So when she had beef with me, then all of a sudden I was getting C's or D's. I was like, this is basic English. Like, what are you doing, woman? Like, I don't understand. So there was this one time, this is the one that um, is my first memory of her, is we had an essay to write on George Orwell, Mm -hmm. 1984. We had, and and just to tell you how basic um, the class was, is that it took four months for people to read the uh, cut down version the abridged version yeah so it wasn't even the full book and we had an essay to write on that and I wrote the essay and I did as many pages as she wanted I made as many words as she wanted she gave me like a c minus yeah and I can't remember what the reason to it was but at the time Jackie was studying as a teacher so I asked her and I know my sister's gonna tell me if it's yeah, I've always, I've always she's, been uh, she's honest. Very, yeah, <laughs> yeah, she's very direct. So I was like, oh, she's going to tell me if I messed up something. So I gave her my paper and I was like, can you read this? Like, is this okay? Like, and there was already symbolism in there and discussion and it was very insightful. I was like, in your grade, I would have given you an A. I was, in, because, yeah, I was yeah. in grade nine and like everyone else was writing like broken sentences and I was, you know, coherent compared to everyone else because of the you know, level of English that we spoke yeah. at home too. So it definitely helped. She gave me a C minus and, and I was like, but why? And then she gave me some bull crap excuse. And I was like, I'm not having it. This doesn't make sense. I'd be getting this grade. So when I gave you my paper, you read it and you're like, no, this is, this is fine. I was like, so what do I do? Like, she's not listening to me. She wants nothing to do with me. She keeps cut, like icing me out. And I remember you made a meeting with her to speak to her about my, my, <laughs> Yeah, My so <laughs> yeah, I actually went to Sika's school yeah. to meet with the teacher because I was always the parent Poor in the me. parent teacher yeah. meetings. Yeah. So I was the one always showing showing up to those meetings. So I went and talked to her and I was like, could you explain to me your rubric in order to grade these papers? And she couldn't answer me. And I asked her, Well, can I see a paper of a student who did better? And she she wouldn't provide it. She had it out for me. Yeah, she, she just, just wanted to give me a hard time. Yeah, and, and and the worst thing, the worst thing of everything is we explained to her because at the time in high school, you were also very sick. Yeah. You were in and out of the hospital yeah. often. Yeah. And we told her to be more understanding if you miss assignments or whatnot because yeah. you always all had a doctor's my, note. Exactly. All of my, my teachers knew uh, that I had Crohn's disease mm-hmm. and they knew at the time I was just freshly diagnosed as well so I was in and out of the hospital a lot and everyone was super understanding like my doctors wrote notes and everything but she was so pig-headed she wouldn't she wouldn't she she was nasty she was bad she didn't have anything to back up her grading Mm. none she just wanted to be a jerk about it like she just wanted to be like 
oh, okay, you think this this class is going to be easy for you because you're English? Well, here, let me make it hard for you. Here's a C minus on something that does not deserve a C minus. Yeah. And I was offended. Oh, not just that, but she actually ended up failing you. Yeah, but that was in two two years later. Yeah, so, so she, she had, her I twice. had her twice. I had her twice. The first time I was like, oh my God, this is going to be ridiculous. And then when I saw her on my schedule two years later, I was like, okay, I'm going to try and be like the kindest I can be. You know, the, the most like molded to her just to like please her. Mm-hmm. And she was... She was a bitch. Yeah. She like, was. She didn't give two sh- yeah. Like, she no. was like, no, got you a second year? I'm going to yeah. you over. Like, and I even tried to get out of advanced English in my last year to get out of her class. Yeah. And I couldn't because she was doing advanced and oh, no. and regular English. And so even if I tried to transfer out of advanced to regular, um, she was the only one who was going to fit my schedule. And, and she failed so you out of spite yeah. because... She ended up retiring. Yes. She ended up retiring. So I she she gave me a 52 on my report card. And I was like, and again, we're talking basic English. It was Our English advanced yeah. English for uh, as a second language. So again, she failed you. Yeah, she failed me. And retired. And retired. So the grade could not be changed. Yeah. So you were forced to go into adult education. Yeah. Just to finish it. Yeah. And then when you went to adult education... Yeah, I remember the lady was talking to me, like, super slowly because she thought I was Quebecois, so she thought I was speaking, like, mostly French. So she was talking to me like, hi, why do you not want to do the class? Like, because you have to do the whole class or just the exam. And then she, with a failed grade of 52... So she, she was, like, that. really going basic English yeah. to see how well you could understand exactly. her. Exactly. And then I was, like, she looked at me, and she was talking to me like that. And I was, like, oh, well, actually, I just need to do the exam. And I was talking to her just, like, this super fluently. And I was, like, I just need to do the exam because my teacher is a yeah. And she failed me, and then she ended up retiring, so I couldn't have my grade changed. Because I even tried to go back to my high school and be, like, hey, to the principal, like, what the f- yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm English, you know this. Like, I had more trouble in French class. I even got a better, like, grade in French class. And this is, you know, our first language in, in Quebec. Um, and the, the principal was like, no, like, I can't do anything. She she failed you, but she's, you know, she's she retired. So you're going to have to redo your class. You so, know, actually going back now and as a teacher, that's actually bullcrap. You can go into the system and change oh, grades really? as admin because oh. I had... Uh, I had the admin ask me at one point if they can change the grade for one of the students. And they did it themselves. I'm like, I'm not going to do it. But what was that in college? No, it was actually in high High school. school? Yeah, in high school. I used to work at a private school. And one of the students was on probation. And they didn't want this student to be kicked out. So they asked me, can we change the grade so that they can stay in the school? I said, as a teacher, I morally can't do it. But if you want to do it as an administration... You could go ahead and but do so. But they asked you for it because her she doesn't she wasn't even part of the school anymore at that point. Do you understand yeah. what I mean? But it's still bullcrap because teachers are supposed to be. I know a lot of people think that teachers get all of summer off, but teachers are still working until the end of June. Yeah. So you would have gotten your grade, and she would have been there to change it. It's just they were signing no, with because, the teacher because I only got my report card. Uh, Mid July. Oh no! They sent it to us by mail, so I got it mid July, which means teachers were off, and I could only contact the school once they reopened in August. Oh no! That was the issue. So she was no longer working there. Yeah, and that's the thing is a teacher who's just there to be spiteful should not be a teacher. She was. Awful. You have to put your feelings. She was such a yeah. teacher that there was a Facebook group. Really? Yeah, about her. And people were convinced I made it because I got into a fight with her once. And then all of a sudden that group appeared. And I was like, I didn't do it, I promise. Oh my goodness. And people were like, yeah, sure. I was like, no, I really didn't. I wonder if that group is still up. It would be interesting to check it out. It was literally called... Oh my gosh. Interesting. It was literally called that. And it had like a... Someone made like a neon light fixture picture of those words. Like the, the F word and her family name. And I was like... I don't have that much talent. Who thinks I did this? That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. But I think, you know, it, it goes to show that if you put your personal feelings while you're teaching, then you're not in the right profession. Because as a teacher... That goes for anything, though. It goes for anything, but it's specifically for teachers. I never liked 
the idea of a teacher's pet and having favorites and having them have better grades. Mm -hmm. For me, when it comes to my students, if they do a great essay, whether we get along or not, because I've had students back when I was in high school threaten to punch me. But then we worked it out. But their essay grade was not reflected in how they treated me, but in their intellectual work. Of course. At least that's for me. I always remove personal feelings from the work. You have to remove emotions from any work you do. Yeah. Otherwise, it'll get taxing. But unless that's a whole other thing, unless the tox- it's a toxic environment, you have experience with that. We'll talk about that in a whole other podcast. The work environment. Oh, my God. God, like I've had some um, some really toxic environments and experiences, but I also want to talk about my experiences with bad teachers. And I think I'm going to start a little bit more chronologically with skipping Egypt. I'm going to go with High elementary school? school. Oh, okay. Yeah, still elementary school, because I've had some really bad teachers who used to pick on me. But I'm not going to talk about the times where I was a brat. I'm going to talk about the times when I was actually a good student and I listened because I was st- we were still back fresh from Egypt. Okay. Okay. So I wanted to be on my best behavior because in Egypt, I was kicked out of schools for bad behavior. We'll put that aside for now. So when I was in elementary school, there was a, a teacher. Um, let's call her Ms. Uh, Wisdom. Okay. Miss Wisdom. Okay. Okay. And Miss Wisdom had it for everything I did. Whether I was into drawing, into art, into anime. I was already starting my love for anime back then because I picked up a Dragon Ball manga back in the days. Just a quick question for you. Your elementary school teacher, did you have one teacher the whole day? Yes. Okay. Unless it was for music or gym classes. Okay. So those... We had that one teacher. So okay. we, we were together. So you were stuck with her like 90% of the time. The whole time. Oh, no. And one of the things I remember the most, and I think that one really caused me trauma, is we had art class. And oh, you no. remember that yeah, one? Yeah, now I so remember. So it was such, nobody should go through that. And it was, I think, even the first couple of weeks of school because the art class was to draw our name so that we can stick it at the front of our desk. But she said, make it so that the name that you're going to draw has your personality. And I loved dragons already. I don't know what was it what was it with me and dragons, but already in grade four, I was obsessed. I think it was grade four. Yeah, I think it was grade four. I just know you've had that obsession for a long time. Yeah. And even when you, you got a little bit older, you used to wear so many clothing with the dragons. The dragons, yeah. yeah. I bought dragon patterned everything. Yeah. I even had a dragon necklace, dragon statues. I think you had some, like, on your pants, too, that were, like, flame yes. dragons. Yes. I remember those ones. Those ones, too. And and the weird thing about being obsessed with dragons, a little, a little side note here, is that dragons technically in Egyptian culture is considered, a, well, not just Egyptian culture, but I'm guessing like Christian culture, Egyptian Orthodox, the symbol of the demon. That's what I was expecting. So I don't, I liked it. Nobody told me no at some so point. So you just went with it. I just went with it. <laughs> and so I wrote my name, Jackie. With dragons. And I put dragons on there and... You know, I made it, you know, flowy and nice. And I was like, I love this so much. And But it was a dragon, but it was rainbowy. So I think this whole dra- creature of darkness personality started very young, but I loved colors. And after I was done, I brought it to her because you're supposed to bring your work to your teacher because they grade everything you do. And so I gave her my paper and she's like, what is this? I'm like, well, this is what you asked for. She's like, this is not what I asked for. Although clearly it was. So on Friday, because Friday afternoons were designated art classes, she grabs my paper in front of everybody, rips it. That's not okay. Rips it. You should get fired for just doing that. You don't humiliate a child like that, especially so not Not even especially so young. You just don't humiliate don't. someone like that. It caused me trauma. Of course. Because, because then you feel like, oh my God, my art is so garbage. I can't do anything right. And all you did was draw something you love that described you in a sense. And she was a very religious woman. Oh, maybe that's why. That's another thing. So I forgot to mention that she was very religious, at least in this context. So I don't know how religious, because I was only a kid. So yeah, and she rips it up. You're what, you're nine? I don't Ten remember. Most? Something, maybe even younger. 
all I remember is just being very upset. And, but I didn't want to cry in front of her. Did you tell mom? I did, but I did after. So I stayed with my very stoic face after she tore it. I just p- picked it back up after she tore it and she told me to start over, but I didn't because it was basically the end of day. Went to the school bus, got back home. And cried. And stoic. Went to the bathroom, closed the door, and then I cried. <laughs> And and so the emotional then, constipation. Yeah, the emo- I was like, I am not gonna give her the satisfaction. Not like she knew you were home and crying in the bathroom. Yeah, like, so I didn't give her the- out of the bathroom. <laughs> I didn't want to give Miss Wisdom the satisfaction. the satisfaction of seeing me cry, get upset. Yeah, so I just cried in the bathroom. Mom asked me what happened. I told her. She saw what it was like. She taped it back up for me. She's such a sweet soul. Yeah. So that's one of the things that I absolutely hated this teacher for. She had it out for me. Everything I did, even with friends I had, she's like, you shouldn't be friends with these kids. You shouldn't be friends with this. It's better for you to be alone. Why? Well, why you gotta be a She just wanted to isolate me. She was, I feel like she was grooming me in a different way, in a very religious way. So she didn't want me to hang out with the other kids. So she just wanted you to be alone. She wanted me to be alone. She was one of the weirdest teachers I've ever had. And so when I had heard... And such at a young age too, right? It really forms you differently, I guess yeah. you could say. It really pushes your path, your mindset in a different way. Yeah, and, and you're impressionable. You're like, I love doing art. And then she just rips it in front of you and you're like, I guess I'm not good enough to do art. Like, Yeah, and, I, so, and so now that I have an, an entire art channel... <laughs> it's kind of like it's a big you yeah. exactly miss wisdom mm. yeah. off. <laughs> she really she really was a terrible person and that is should not, not something have been a teacher a child what? not even to a teen not even to an adult you don't you don't do that to anyone do that to anyone especially when they're so passionate about it you know she could have said something different she could have said oh why don't you try using different colors or different animals no but she just went no it's no good and it's yeah. like who are you to judge? You want to know what's a the worst child thing? Like that. You know how with your English teacher, you had her a second time. Yeah, you had her a second. I time had her too. for grade six. Oh no. Yeah. That but she was allowed. nicer to me in grade six. I don't know why, but she was much nicer to me in grade six. But I would not. The only thing I can think of is that she was going through something in her life, or maybe you reminded her of someone, Perhaps. and it just hurt too much. So she was kind of a yeah. dick about it. Yeah. But it's still not a reason. You no. gotta separate your emotions from your work in any job you yeah, do. Yeah, but like, unlike you, you had terrible experience twice with the same teacher. I had it only once, and then she was nice to me again. I don't understand what happened there, but... Oh, no, she was... Oh, no. Yeah, Miss Wisdom, you suck. <laughs> yeah. No, <it> sucks. <laughs> you suck, Ms. I'm, I'm not even done with her. I guess I'm like... Mm. I know, I, I would have beef with her, but the fact oh. that she did that to you right before retirement is absolutely terrible. That's literally an a-hole move. Do you, do you have any other stories that you want to... About her? Yeah, because I have, like, a lot of teachers that I... Because I've, I've been exposed to more teachers. Yeah. So I can go on for hours yeah. about the different terrible experiences. The only I've thing had. I have left about that English teacher is that one time... This is the first time I had ever rebelled, in a sense. Like, I actually responded back. I used to... A lot of times if someone, um, even up into part of my adulthood, when someone would... I guess, challenge me or talk down to me, I would just shut up. Like, I would just mm-hmm. you close, would shut down. Yeah, close myself off. And she upset me so bad that one time, which I'm going to get to, uh, I actually talked back. And I talked back. So basically what happened, I'm just going to say it right like this, is uh, we were in class. We were just getting settled. The bell hadn't even rung yet. Rung? Rang? The bell didn't ring? Had it rung? English is great! Oh, no, English! <laughs> <laughs> Second language, by the way. <laughs> Um, but the bell didn't ring yet and I was discussing something with someone and they said something to me that surprised me. And as the bell rang, I said, what? And she goes, go outside. I was like, what did I do? Like, I said, what? As the bell rang, like, it's not like I was making commotion beforehand. She goes, go outside and this is not tolerable in class. She didn't want you to talk the second the The bell bell rang. rang. Yeah. I got shocked because someone said something and I didn't expect it. And I went, what? Like, I was like, 
what what just happened? Like, did you really just say that as the bell rang? Now yeah. I have to wait an hour and 15 minutes to find out the rest of this story. And she goes, no, go out. And, and the person I was talking to just looked at me like, what just happened? Oh, no. He's like, what just happened, you know? And I looked at her. I'm like, no, I'm not going outside. I'm not a fucking yeah. dog. Oh, nice. Oh, no. Because <laughs> she said, go sit outside. Yeah. I was like, no, I'm not your fucking yeah. dog. I'm not going to sit outside. And I said that. And that my heart was racing. Because I'd never spoken to The adrenaline. <laughs> the adrenaline. adrenaline was like. <gasps> yeah. I was like, oh, my God. I'm going to be in so much trouble. <laughs> and I remember leaving. And she actually expected me to sit outside the class. And I remember leaving. Was Wait, was like, that time you I called, called me? You. <laughs> I called you. Oh, and then we went and grabbed, like, lunch or something. Yeah, yeah. I called you, and I said I walked out of class because Miss yeah. was so mean to me. And you knew I wasn't going to lie about that. You knew how I was in class. So I called you, and I was like, can you call in sick for me? And I did. And you called, yeah, and you called. And, I remember and called it, Yeah. And then we went out for the rest of the evening, because I think it was my last class, or it was, like, the, my before last class, so I just skipped the last two. I think we went to Chinatown. We had supper. Yeah, I lunch, think so. I mean. <laughs> But I still got in trouble for that. Did you? Yeah. Even though you had permission. I had permission, but it's the way I spoke to her. So oh she went to the God. principal with that. And she's like, she disrespected me. She spoke out of line. She was supposed to go sit outside and then she disappeared. And then I told the, um, I had a meeting with the principal because they were like, well, you're going to have two days of detention. But I'd never had detention in my life. Yeah. I have full-blown panic attack. I was like, no, this isn't fair. She's really mean to me. She's always against me. You know, I've had her twice in a row now, and every time she's bad with me, and it doesn't even make sense. Like, I'm... And I told the principal, I said, have I ever had detention in the five years I have been here? Have I ever had any issues with any teacher? She goes, no. I said, well, there you go. That's proof telling you that we're, we have friction, yeah. you know? And I said, I refuse to take detention from you guys because of this teacher. And then, did I step in for that, or did they actually... No, I, she, she pushed away, like, she as soon as I told her, like, I've been here five years, I've never had a single issue with any of my teachers, and this is the first time it happens, I'm refusing the detention, I am not, and I'm not going to get expelled for something yeah. like this. Like, this is not fair at all. And my principal realized that. She's like, yeah, it's true, you've never been in trouble, you've never been a bad kid, you've never missed class, unless you had, like, you know, doctor's notes, literally doctor's mm-hmm. notes. Um, so she let it slip, but San Martino was so pissed. Yeah. They wanted me to, um, apologize to her. I said, I'm not apologizing to her. Yeah, no, there's no, I, I remember she wanted a note, like yeah. an apology letter. Yeah, and I yeah. said no. But the thing is, you were worried to get in trouble, but I was always on your side. Yeah. So I never let any of the teachers who misunderstood you. Yeah. To let, to get away with it. Yeah. And she was the worst. And they knew me at some point. Yeah, because you, you, you. You were in I didn't, school. We didn't the go time. to the same high school. No, like I you, went to a high school much further. Yeah, exactly. But you were studying to become a teacher. So you used to substitute sometimes in That's my true. classes. And yeah. and so um my col not my colleagues, my my peers knew you as well. Like, oh Miss Jackie. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> so people knew you at my school. So it was a little bit easier. That's true. Yeah, and then some of the teachers. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's true. I, when you said something. that time that you left class, I started, like, memories were coming back. I was yeah. like, that's true. We did go hang out after because yeah. I went, you know, I didn't have classes yeah, exactly. that time or something like that. Oh, no, I was so upset. Like, it was such a huge commotion. And I was like, I'm not getting attention in my last year for this. Yeah. Like, yeah. no, this is not happening. And if you think a teacher has it out for you, don't doubt yourself. Probably. If they're a crappy person, believe your kid. If if your kid is telling you this teacher's against me, believe them. Don't always believe the teachers. But of course, get both sides of the story. But there are teachers... That are just who, not meant for the job. Yeah. And they're I can say that everyone. from my experience, even till now, yeah. I can tell you there's teachers that I look at who put that more movie days, there. but they put more movie days than actual content teaching. So the kids don't learn. Yeah. They're just there. And it, this, they're, the movie days are so frequent that the students are like, another movie. That's when you know. That the, the teacher doesn't need Yeah, give that's when you know. The two teacher, craps. Not, not at all. Teacher just wants out. I, I have another teacher also who did put me down. So Miss Wisdom put me down for my art. And I had another teacher in grade five. So the year right after. Who was heavily biased. 
So again, we're here in Quebec, in Montreal, very diverse, very cultural hub. So this teacher, she was Greek and she loved her Greek students. She loved her Greek students. And a lot of my friends back then were a lot of the Lebanese students um, and some of the Egyptian students. Because we do have Greek in us, so hopefully we do have that Greek. helps you. Yeah, a but bit. no, she was really always calling, you know, uh, Nikopoulos and Dimitrios and uh, Christina, Christ I forget, Crystal, I think, names oh like that. Gosh. And there was this one time where we had a play that we were supposed to put on. Oh, no. And I really wanted to be part of that play. I loved the idea of acting. And uh, it was basically Aesop's fables. So in French, it's Jean de la Fontaine. Oh, yes, okay. Okay, so you know the French, yeah. like, in English, they have Aesop's fables. Okay. Basically, moral of the story, but told in animals. Okay. Doing their thing. And it was Le Corbeau et le Renard. Mm -hmm. um, is it the raven and the fox? Yeah, I think so. So the, the story... Yeah, Corbeau, I think it is. Yeah, Corbeau et le Renard. It was the, the story of the, the fox and the raven, I think. And I really wanted to be one of the characters. So I auditioned in the class to be part of the, uh, the play. And I worked hard and I memorized the lines. And she said, you're too mechanical. You're not good at acting. So I'm like, okay, I'll keep practicing. So she's like, no, you know what? We'll have Christina do it. You guys are kids, though. You can't be perfect. Yeah, but she... You memorized the lines. That's saying something already that you wanted it. Yeah, you know? I wanted it so bad. But she took the other student to do it. And the other student was reading the lines. So when I was kind of re-saying it as they were saying it, she's like, oh, you see? Now that you're not trying to act, you're acting better. So I'm like, okay, so can I act now? She's like, no, I'm going to send you to orthopedagogue, student help. Yeah. So she ended up sending me to student help where they were trying to teach me how to read just to get me out of the classroom so that I don't watch them practice to do the play. Ramses, what are you doing? Come here. You upset Ramses. Come here, Ramses. So Ramses is joining us. <laughs> He Little wanted mister. the door to be open. He just wanted the door to be open, and now he's in. If you're hearing any kind of snoring, that is the cat. <laughs> <laughs> you go bye bye. You good? You happy here? Oh, thank you for the kisses. Very he's gonna sweet. bite you. He's gonna bite you. Don't bite me though. No, I don't want it. <laughs> Brat. So yeah, I was basically told that I was not good enough and to then be put in a play. into help. Yeah, just so that I don't of... watch them. That's mean. She was so mean. And then at some point, I was also trying to be friends with the other students who were accepted into the play. But she told me to stop trying to be their friends. So I wasn't allowed to play soccer with you the same kids. You weren't allowed to be in the same posse. Yes. Absolutely not. That is wrong. Why do teachers think that it's okay? To, to tell you who to be friends with and, and all that. Yeah, I've had, like, even Miss Wisdom tried to make me not be friends with, that is so wrong. Yeah. Let your kids, not your kids, but let, you know, your students be friends who, with whoever they feel comfortable being friends Stay out with. of their business. Unless them... they're being bullied. Yeah. Stay out. Like, yeah. It's not, you are not their parent. Uh, yeah. So actually there's a character on my main channel that I called Witchcrafter. And this character is actually an accumulation. I know it sounds like a dramatic backstory. But she is the... Well, I mean, trauma causes trauma, right? So it does right. have to come from somewhere. Yeah, and I guess the portrayal of witchcrafter came up in, in the way that I wanted to put together all the things I was told I was bad at, which is acting and art. Crafting. And the last thing was actually poetry. And the teacher that told me I sucked at poetry was back in, well, actually in university. And it was... Why do people give themselves the right to tell you you suck at something? Especially poetry and, is very personal. And in a rude way, too, mm -hmm. right? Like, you could be gentle. You can tell someone they suck at something and be gentle about it, you know? But yeah. they're, like, your teacher ripping up your your drawing. That's that's not okay. It's not okay. And it was very traumatic. And I, I still carry that trauma course, with me. for sure. Even though I don't really care for her anymore, it's still the memories of these things having yeah. had happened. Yeah that I was more concerned about. Mm -hmm. No one should should go through that. So yeah, Ms. Wisdom and, and 
uh, my grade five teacher, she, she, they both did some damage to me. Yeah. I know it's probably like, hey, nobody, you know, it's not that traumatic, but I really wanted to be part of something. And they both stopped me from, from being into that. And it's probably a lot less bad compared to my university professors and what they did to me. Yeah. And I, I could, I could go on for, let me just give a couple more examples and I, I won't go into too much detail for all of them, but let, let's uh, talk about high school. Mm. This teacher didn't do anything to me, but he did say something that marked me. I've had a few of those in high school. Yeah, so he's not a bad teacher per se. It's just the way sometimes things come out really hurts. So yeah. you have to be very careful. Yeah, exactly. Especially as a teenager and you're starting to grow up and you're and trying to hormones. figure things out and you're trying to know who you are as a person. Yeah. So let's call him um, Nahim, that teacher. And he was a gym teacher who turned into our science teacher because there weren't enough teachers. And I mean, it doesn't take much to qualify okay. back then. So he was a gym teacher turned in. He was still wearing the short shorts in, in, science. <laughs> in science class. <laughs> so um, there was one time where he was asking someone, he, he brought... A tarantula in class Heck no so so he brought it and he's like I have this tarantula that was abandoned and I would like to know if any of you with your parents permission would like to take care of it my fear of spiders wasn't that bad back then so, me goosebumps. I know I'm getting goosebumps right now <laughs> as I'm thinking about it and I was like hey you know what it would be cool for me to get to know a tarantula and maybe I can take care of it so I put my hand up and other students put their hand up. So he's like, okay, I'm going to test you first. And what he did is he proceeded to tell a joke that involved periods. I think it was had something to do with a vampire, something like that. I don't, I really honestly don't remember the joke. I just remembered it was funny. So I laughed because I thought it was funny. So then the second I laughed, he did pointed at me and he's like I don't trust you because you laughed at this joke so uh, yeah we're both pausing right here yeah like okay so how, he how old were you I was in grade eight yeah period jokes are as funny as fart jokes at that point yeah so then he said he didn't trust me because that I hurts. laughed yeah so for someone to tell you that they don't trust you well, it hurts. It hurts. So he's not a bad teacher. It's just the, the fact that he, he said, said something. Yeah. Anything that you say as a teacher could stay with someone Forever. for the rest of their lives. Yeah. That's a fact. That's 100. Yeah. Nope. It's an absolute fact. So this teacher definitely marked me. That's an example. Um, let's go into the really bad experiences that I had also with other teachers. One of them is... Um, all of these are basically as I was doing my bachelor's and master's degree. So let's go with the, um, when I was doing my bachelor's degree in teaching, I have health issues too. Okay. So health issues were already starting back then. And I was very anemic, like very anemic. So I was pale. I was exhausted. So even though I'm not necessarily looking at you, I'm still listening. This teacher did not like the fact that, that I was, looking. yeah, I was like, having my fist on my cheek and just kind of leaning on the desk. It was just like this, like sitting with my, my cheek kind of just laying down, slumped. So during one of the classes of the most boring subject, which is grammar trees, Ooh. grammar trees, she comes up to me as I'm doing my work and she's like, you don't even look interested in becoming a teacher. Why don't what? you leave? And the worst thing is this teacher... Why do people have power trips like this? What 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 does saying that to a student do except for make them feel bad? Right. And you don't even know what their day is like or what they're going through. Yeah. Just shut your... Yeah. Mouth. What if... <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, the worst thing is like, what if I wasn't exhausted? What if I was depressed? You can't make these assumptions. Telling someone to leave, you don't know, as you said. Where is that person in their life? Don't say things like that. Especially like each person displays different things different ways, right? So someone that's 
depressed, mm -hmm. you know, can look super sad. And other people just go as nothing happened. Like, right. they look completely normal, right? So you can't judge a book by its cover. No, but she, the worst, the worst part of her saying this to me and had an impact is because she was the supervisor of the program who was also teaching a class. Oh, no. So she comes back later on, though, in the story. Is she better? She comes, yeah. Okay. Because so maybe you're just getting women at the wrong time of their lives because that's two women, right, so far that right. have been bad to you at first and then okay with you after. Right. Because so they get to know me. Maybe you're touching a nerve at first. But I do nothing. I know, but it, you're flawless. So, you know, <laughs> no. they're obviously jealous. I'm in university, you know what I mean? Like, well, I'm they, they might be threatened by you in a certain way. Maybe. There might be an energy that you're giving off. Because you, you do have a bulldog energy. I do have a bulldog you do energy. Have, yeah, and a lot of people are intimidated by you. It's odd. Because I try to portray myself as a good person. Because, yeah, because I, I hope that I am a good person. You're a great person. I think it's just resting yeah. face. You think so? Yeah, sometimes when you don't talk, your face is just so... Threatening? Threatening, I guess. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm used to it. I'm your sister. I've seen this face for, you know, my whole yeah. life since I'm, I was born. So it doesn't scare me. But it can get scary. <laughs> I guess, because I'm not a mean person. I it's can just be, the I guess. I think it is the energy that you, you portray, right? Because even mm. I, I have had... It's our wall. We've it, been hurt so much that we've built a wall. So people don't necessarily know how approachable we are. Exactly. But like even then, like, you know, every job I walk into, the people that are training me say, you have a big character. Like, I can... I can feel that, yeah. you know, and I'm like, you've known me for three hours. What did I do? <laughs> yeah. You know, so like, I, I think we do portray something and we do emanate, uh, emit, radiate, emit, we do, we emit. radiate. Yeah, we <laughs> emit, yeah, radiate. And, and emit, I was like, that's not the right word. <laughs> I told you English second language, guys, <laughs> but I used to get A's, I promise. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, but we do, we do radiate, um, an energy, and I think it is intimidating to most mm. people because most people are intimidated. But if by you do see us, come me. and say hi. We're actually pretty friendly. <laughs> it depends for me. Well, it <laughs> no, depends. always friendly, but uh, I think we do ra radiate something um, that intimidates people. Mm -hmm. So then they want to kind of dominate and uh, step over us, and like you don't look interested, get out. And yeah. that's her way of going. Oh, maybe I squished her enough for her to be mm, to put back in the place. Kind exactly. Of thing. So that's the only thing I can. So you're, you're, yeah, you're thinking devil's advocate. So let me just give the rest of this story. Okay. So she asked me to leave. I didn't because I wanted to be a teacher with every existence within me. I wanted to be a teacher. And you can't just kick someone out like that. No, it's university. She has no power. <laughs> she, you know, unless she brings in security, I'm not going to leave. Um, so these are during classes. Later on, we have internships. And for internships, we have internship supervisors. And it's usually the Is same it? teachers who had she? you in a class. So she, she was your supervisor. She was my supervisor for an Did internship. Did you please don't mention it. Hey, listen, I feel like I listening. know the story. I feel like I don't I think you know the story. So just it's let's... familiar. I'm not sure. I guess... Okay, okay you'll, you'll see. Yeah. So she ended up becoming my internship supervisor for elementary school. Okay. And she... Well, I was for good reason, scared that she was going to fail me. Of course, me. I wouldn't, wouldn't I, was, I would feel the same way. <laughs> I was really worried. And she ended up coming to supervise my class. But the worst Were thing you about- shaking? Wait, listen. The class that I was actually assigned to be an intern for was known as the most difficult elementary group that they had in the school, in which, believe it or not, They've gotten three of their teachers who left. Who left in they that got same out. school year. Oh my god! So I was the English teacher for that group, and again, reminder: English teachers are only there for one class, and then they leave. Yeah. But the class she came to supervise was the worst class. Was the worst group ever. Oh my gosh! So naturally, I have a question for you. Yeah. Were you assigned to this group because your teacher made you get assigned to this? Can they have that choice? Like, okay, you can put Jackie on, you know, this specific class. No, no you get, okay. because as an English it's teacher random. in elementary school, you teach all the students. That's true, yeah. Well, it depends. 
Oh, yeah. It's all grades, too, All right? grades. Yeah. All grades, all students So it's just that school. one school that you got, oh, no. The one that fit her schedule to come and supervise me for was that one group. I wonder if she did on purpose. I don't think so, because she wouldn't know. Yeah, it's, it's only the teachers that know. That's true. So she comes into the class, and the kids know that I'm being graded. But do they care? No. No, because they kicked out. They not kicked out, but they burnt out three teachers that same year. That's so ridiculous. They should have separated that whole classroom. They tried. Oh my God. They tried, but there was like some what kind of alpha it? grade five. Yeah, that's there was like alpha energy. Going grade on. five and six become a little bit uh, boisterous and extra, like super extra. So she shows up to the class. She's sitting in the back with her notepad and paper and pen, and my class starts. So I did the lesson planning, and I start. Okay, so today we're going to do this, and they start talking laughing and so made it look like you things. had no control no control so at my most desperate moment in that class i'm like everyone enough heads down all the students put their heads down i closed the lights to give them a minute to and it was chill and we stayed like this for 10 minutes you scared them <laughs> for 10 minutes you had While to be my alpha supervisor was sat there, there Watched me tell the students to have their heads down, close the lights, and it was quiet. Very quiet. And just for context, English How quiet classes... Was it? was it as quiet? Was it quiet enough for you to feel your... You could hear your my, heart beating. I could hear my heart beating. You could feel it in your throat. <laughs> yeah, I was so nervous. Like, 10 minutes of quiet? Yeah. No talking? Yeah. And I knew that I didn't know how bad it was going to be after for my evaluation. And then afterwards, when we came back, I turned the lights back on. I'm like, are we ready to do the activity? And then the students said, yes. And then the entire rest of the class they was... They were fine? So they just needed... They needed that be, moment down. Yeah. And again, for context, classes, English classes are 60 minutes. Mm. So I spent 10 minutes yeah. of that 60 minutes... Telling them to be quiet with their heads down. Yeah. They and probably it, really just needed to be like... They needed, yeah. They needed someone to be stern with them yeah. so they could just relax for a second. Yeah, and not just that. So I was nervous. That was the longest 10 minutes of your life. My <laughs> teacher mentor was nervous. Oh my gosh. Because she knows how bad they are. Yeah. So she was nervous for me. Of course, especially with your supervisor yeah. being there grading you. So then afterwards, yes. my supervisor and my intern um, teacher both went away. And I was waiting in the teacher's lounge. You're like, that's it? That's it? I'm like, oh man, I'm, I'm going to fail. Because you fail an internship, you have to wait an entire year to redo it. Oh my gosh. So I would have been delayed a whole year. So she comes out and she's like, I haven't seen an intern have such good control. Yeah, because they're more nervous. Class. Yeah. People are going to be more nervous. But you were ner so nervous of oh my gosh. it going bad that you went, nope, this is it. This is the last straw. So... Your nervousness kind of worked out for yeah, you. Yeah, it worked out. And I ended up getting something like an A plus nice. for this. Yeah. So, I so she up, had respect for you. She had again. respect for me. And then, wait for this, she comes back again. She ended up being the first person after I graduated to recommend me. Oh, wow. For a private school, elementary school teacher. Oh, wow. And I ended up getting the job. And it was my first full time so job. So that that one thing that you did, she she got full respect. For yeah. You. And from there, she's like, Jackie's bomb. So I can't say she's a bad teacher, but she, but she did rough. give me yeah some really rough experiences. But then it came back as a positive experience. Yeah. It helped mold you in a sense. Yeah, it did. It shaped you. It did because since not then, intentionally, I, but it did. Yeah, I was never afraid to be stern in a classroom again. Not mean. But no, but stern. stern. You have to be listened to, of course. Yeah. And classroom management is definitely one of the hardest things to do. Let me give one more story, very quick, uh, about one other teacher. I have plenty, so I'm just going to be very quick for this one. This one was during my master's degree. And one of the classes I took was creative writing because I want to write a novel. And it's just one of those things I haven't gotten a chance to do because I really want to do it. So I took a creative writing class with an actual known author here in Canada was teaching a class on creative writing and we were every week we would tell a story or she would give us a prompt she's like okay you have to do a poem or you have to do this or that 
And then one time she told us, she gave us a, a prompt of a poem. Okay. And I did the poem, but I wasn't there when we were presenting. So I just gave her my poem because I had a doctor's appointment. And she read it to the class and she said that this is an example of a great poem. Okay. Okay. But when she graded me, she bad. failed me. Little did she know that I was friends with the other students in that class. And they told me that she said it was great and a so, good example and everyone should follow that structure. And then she failed you. She failed me. So she's like my English teacher. And then I went to the ombudsman of the university. Oh, I think you've told me about this. Yeah. So then I put a complaint against her for being unfair and extremely biased. She called me into her office and she said, oh, you're just doing that to spite me, aren't you? I'm going to give you a passing grade, but not because you're good, but because I don't want any trouble. What a yeah. And she passed me. What a yeah. And I, yeah, I still remember her. She's so two-faced. She is so two-faced. Oh so, yeah, that's another a whole other story. If you want us to go into more detail about the teachers that we've had and the experiences that we've had, let us know. Maybe next time I can talk a little bit. And more. let us, oh, <laughs> let, let us know. Yeah, I know, I've had so many experiences yeah, with teachers. But that's but okay. Let us know your experiences with teachers, too. We're very curious, and we love knowing your side of the story, because this is, after all, coffee and conversation. Conversations are not just one-sided. So let us know. I'm Jackie. And I'm Sika. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.